What's up, you guys? I still cannot believe that I am in a home that I own in New York. You guys don't understand what a huge dream come true that is for me. So today, we're gonna take you down memory lane, New York style. Thank you to New York & Company for sponsoring this video. When my friends at New York & Company found out that I was moving back to the East Coast, they decided to send me a few of their pieces from their new collection, and I'm obsessed. I want you guys to check it out. What a better way to say welcome home. Shopping at New York & Company is such a New York staple, and I absolutely love it because there's so many cute outfits to pick from. So if you can't find these exact styles, I know you will find something you absolutely love. If you don't know, New York & Company is an online fashion destination that's convenient and super easy to shop. I also really love how inclusive their sizes are. They literally go from double zero to 20, and they also include petite and tall. You guys know I really appreciate petite. <laughs> With all these new pieces, you can literally mix and match so much of it with your own personal styling touches and build your wardrobe around these absolutely classic essentials. This is the perfect outfit because it's just one piece. You don't have to think about it. You literally have one full jumper and it can either be dressed up or dressed down. This is the perfect thing to wear to a barbecue or to dress up with some great jewelry, a bright lip and some heels. And you can wear this to even a formal occasion. I am obsessed with these leather vegan pieces. They're so in right now. I love the color of this jacket. Brown was definitely the color of the year. And I love how you have these two matching pieces and you can dress them in so many different ways. They're really versatile. You also can pair this vegan leather blazer with even a pair of jeans and really dress it up that way. Having a pair of black leather shorts in your closet is a must have. It's an essential part of your wardrobe. So I love that I got to pair this with just a classic white button down shirt and an oversized blazer. And it really brings together the outfit. This outfit can be worn in so many ways and so many different places. This is definitely one of my favorites. And hey, if you guys like the shirt that I have on right now, it's also New York and & Company, and you can shop all of these looks and so much more. All you have to do is click the link in the description to shop New York & Company. So as you guys know, I'm always bragging about being a New Yorker. Yes, New York this, New York that. I have so much pride for being a native New Yorker. Okay, but seriously, I love New York. Like the Hamilton song says, I really do believe it's the greatest city in the world. I was born in the Lower East Side. It's by the South Street Seaport. That's where I grew up. I then lived in Vladix. From Vladix, I then moved to Seward Park housing from Seward Park. Then that's where I got the opportunity to be in 3LW. And that technically is the first time that I started staying slightly away from New York. I was just in New Jersey. Newark, that is. From Newark, New Jersey, that's when I got the opportunity to join the Cheetah Girls, and that's actually the first time I officially moved from New York and started living in LA. So the only reason I ever moved away from New York was because I was given amazing opportunities in Los Angeles to work with Disney Channel. At the time, we had signed to Hollywood Records to do the first Cheetah Girl albums, and that was the first time I ever lived in LA, officially, officially. The only reason I've been living in LA all this time was because The Real shoots out of Warner Brothers in Los Angeles. And just so you guys know, The Real is coming back. So we will be back in LA, but I'm gonna be going back and forth. I've obviously owned a home in Los Angeles, but my dream was always to be back in New York my lifelong goal and dream was to have a family and raise my children in New York as New Yorkers and obviously just to be able to be with my family. I just like the vibe of New York. I love getting on the train. My new favorite thing is getting on the Metro North. I love getting on the train and arriving in Grand Central Station. I think there's nothing like it. Walking around and, and just enjoying the city. I get to have an amazing city life when I want and then I get to come literally 45 minutes outside of the city and enjoy my house and a backyard and a pool and the one thing that I am mainly looking forward to is the holidays in my new home. First of all, I've never spent Christmas anywhere other than New York. Like, and I've said I never will. How do you celebrate Christmas in places that don't have snow? I've never understood it. When we were living in LA, the Grove had fake snow going on 
oh, I think it was like made of bubbles. And I always just thought that was so weird. I love having a New York authentic Christmas. I feel like for anybody, when you think of your childhood and just like how nostalgic the holidays are, I think it's important to celebrate or where your family is. First of all, my mom used to spend like her last little bit of money to make sure that Claudette and I got Christmas pictures with Santa Claus. Comment below if you have a photo of yourself crying with Santa Claus, because I feel like we all do. I definitely was absolutely petrified. Funny enough, we did the same thing with Jet. We took her to Macy's. She wasn't having it, but we did it anyway. I'm looking forward to things like going to Rockefeller Center and going ice skating and seeing the tree. I've gone to Radio City Music Hall for the Christmas Spectacular and seeing the Rockettes. Love that. I cannot wait to go to like Serendipity and have frozen hot chocolate. There's so many other things. We did do igloos outside of Rockefeller Center. My mom throws the most incredible Christmas party and it's like the biggest party every single year. For the first time, I think the party is going to be at Claudette's house. And so we cannot wait to celebrate the holidays, especially because Claude has an indoor swimming pool. It's heated and I cannot wait for there to be snow all around us with the glass and we can look out and see the snow and be in the swimming pool with all the kids in our family. I'm also putting a jacuzzi outside and I'm really excited for there to be snow all over. My property has Christmas trees all around it, so I can't wait for the trees to be covered in snow and for us to sit in the hot tub, you know, some cider, a hot toddy, and just chill. Just keeping it real, let me know if you're from New York and you relate to this. I feel like I took New York for granted when I was growing up here. I never thought like, oh my God, this is so cool. I also really do understand that because we grew up in somewhat poverty and in the hood, we didn't look at New York as being this amazing place. It was really rough growing up in the Lower East Side in the 80s and the 90s. And now you go back and it's like the trendiest and the coolest place to be and very hipster vibes. And while that's awesome, I do miss a little bit of the essence of what the Lower East Side originally was. There were a lot of artists in the community. We were known for like really cool antique shops and thrifting and like I didn't realize it until I left and then came back. And so when I was in high school, my biggest dream was I'm gonna move out. Like I, I literally was like, I can't wait to get out of the city. I can't wait to have a backyard and a house. I had never lived in a house until I got married to Israel. I lived in an apartment my entire life. So our home in Bel Air was the first house I ever lived in. My parents ended up moving upstate New York. And so they had their house there and I loved that, but eh. That's a lie. Initially, when my mom moved to upstate New York, me and my sister were like devastated. We were like, we don't want to move to the middle of nowhere. You know, we were just becoming adults and enjoying, you know, all the cool things about the city, like the fact that things are open really late. We loved the social life and the hustle and bustle of the nightlife in New York City, and we were enjoying that. So that was kind of like, where are we moving? But now we love it. We get why my mom obviously wanted a backyard and wanted to enjoy having a house. Home is where the heart is, people. I had to come back around. The things that I experience now in New York, it is, it is literally a completely different experience because I was poor when I was growing up and that's just the truth. Like I would do Christmas shopping in the slush, freezing because I couldn't afford to get in a cab or I didn't have the money, Uber didn't exist then. So it just was very different experience, you know, when you are thugging it through the snow, walking through slush, taxis passing you, splashing you with dirty snow. It, it was a different experience. I feel like Israel was concerned about the cold when we first moved here. Like Israel was definitely nervous about like terrible freezing weather. And then we realized we're not gonna be walking anywhere. Like that's just not, that's just not the reality of our lives currently. And I'm grateful for that. I'm sure I'll even at some point miss being in my Tims and just walking through the city in the snow. You miss things when you don't have them. I realize that. I also think it's important that people realize how beautiful New York is. I think there is this stigma that New York is just the dirty city of Manhattan that is constantly noisy and so much hustle and bustle. 
I, the other day, went on a hike with my family and it was absolutely beautiful. I mean, full on waterfalls and just this stunning, enchanted place. We looked around and I looked at Israel and I said, this is New York. And people don't realize that New York isn't just Times Square. Like there are absolutely beautiful places. If you go to Central Park, you just look around and you're like, oh my gosh, how is this stunning place in the middle of such a busy city? And just, there's so many other gems that I think people don't notice about New York. I am a fan of the dirty water hot dog, okay? There is nothing like grabbing a hot dog in the street. I love a good hot dog. Let me know in the comments below what you put on your hot dog. Like I'm, I do ketchup and the onions, not the sauerkraut, like the orange looking onions. I don't know what the proper name for it is. Let me know in the comments below if you know the name. Also, nuts for nuts. Let me tell you, I love roasted peanuts that you can get in the street. I love being on Broadway and housed in that area around there in Soho and just grabbing Nuts for Nuts. That's the actual brand, that's what it says, Nuts for Nuts. And I like the peanuts. I know now they have other options like almonds, no. Roasted peanuts is the way to go. It's nostalgic for me. The smell is the greatest smell of all time when you're walking past the street and you smell that. It's just amazing. Now that I've been back in New York, my perfect day in New York starts with me waking up, taking my time. If you guys know me, I am not an early riser. I do it if I have to, but if it's like a perfect day for me, eh, she's waking up at like, that's not true actually. We've been waking up super early and loving it. Yeah, so like six, seven-ish, and then we go to our local gym. Let me put it this way. I have actually gone there, done my entire workout, taken a shower at the gym, gotten my hair done by my homegirl, Asia, who hooks up my hair. Asia works at the spa, she blow dries my hair, and then I'm ready to come home and get dressed and like get ready for the day. After we finish up at the gym, I will grab a coffee in Mount Kisco at Mass, which is an amazing coffee spot, super chic. I love the decor in there. It looks like a Nancy Myers film. Then from there, I'd come back to the house, kind of get myself together, put on a cute little outfit to head to the train station. When I tell you that I'm obsessed with taking the train into the city, it is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I actually find that it is a place to like woosah, get my mind together. It's only like 45 minutes and I love it. So we head to the train station. Bobo's Cafe is at the train station. We will grab food there and maybe some more coffee or I really love their chai latte. Add a splash of vanilla, just my suggestion. And we will get on the train with either a book. I just joined the Kindle Club. Please comment below any suggestions you might have for me to read. Mariah bought me a Kindle and I'm obsessed. Then we arrive at Grand Central Station. And then we will just enjoy the day. We'll either go to a restaurant that we were looking forward to. We'll do a little shopping in Soho. We love going to museums. We did the Metropolitan Museum of Art the other day, the Met, and it was absolutely incredible. I love going to Central Park, having a picnic in Central Park, going to one of my favorite restaurants, the Boathouse, getting on the little gondolas and reenacting the whole Sex in the City scene, except for I don't wanna fall into the water like Carrie did with Big. Um, and then from there, at any point, we'll go visit like my Titi Fuji down in the Lower East Side. There's so many things, just enjoying the day. I also have a cousin named Caleb that lives in the city and we love meeting up with him and doing cool stuff, whether it's in Brooklyn. The one hotel in Brooklyn is so amazing and they have a bomb restaurant. So we've been going there lately. You can never go wrong with having dinner at Carbone, having an amazing drink, having some wine and then heading home on the train. But the fun thing is, there is also a farmer's market in the train station that I am obsessed with. Grand Central has this incredible market where you can get fresh produce, you can get croissants, pastries, cheeses, and so many things. And so Mariah and I actually love to have like recipes that we find. We'll go into the market and actually find all the ingredients that we need, fresh ingredients, and then we'll get on the train, come home and make that dinner. Put the fireplace on and watch like Dateline or any other creepy documentaries about people committing crimes. <laughs> 
Does that make us weird? Are any of you guys obsessed with true crime documentaries? Let me know in the comments below. But that to me is a perfect New York day. I gotta be honest, I have not missed anything about LA. I, I really haven't and I, I feel terrible saying that, but I, I miss Lana. I miss, even though Lana comes back and forth with us nonstop. I'm trying to think, is there anything I missed about LA? Um, what did I miss about LA? Cool thing about LA is that we used to do like random weekend trips and road trips, which I did love, but we also can do that here. We'll do the Catskills, we'll do the Hamptons, Martha's Vineyard, Cape Cod, Nantucket. I mean, we definitely have those things on the East Coast as well. Just saying. Okay, so we are about to play a little game all about New York, but it's a question of like, it's from movies. So this is like a test to see if I am, okay, this is the thing. I am a true New Yorker. I am not a big movie buff. So let's see how this goes. The Plaza Hotel. In the movie, it's called the Ding Dang Dong, but it's the Plaza Hotel. That is based on FAO Schwartz, which originally actually was across the street from the Plaza Hotel, but is now in Rockefeller Plaza. Oh my gosh, it's supposed to be Vogue, but in the movie it is... Oh my God. Miranda Priestley for <laughs> Runway. <laughs> Mariah just helped me. Thank you, Mariah. Ru runway. It was a small bookstore. I don't remember the name of the small bookstore, but it was supposed to be like a Barnes and Nobles, like a bigger bookstore trying to take over a little small like mom and pop store. It was called the shop around the corner. <laughs> you guys wanna hear a fun fact? I really should know this because if you look closely, I am actually an extra in You've Got Mail. I walked across the street in one scene where it's snowing. She lives in the Bronx. I'm right? The South South Bronx. Amazing. Oh my God. Where do they meet? So y'all just don't want to help me this time? Where I'm going Thursday. They meet in Chicago? No, oh my God, you're right. She was in college and they had to drive home from the thing. Okay, that's what it is. They, they were going to college in Chicago and they drove back together. Things got weird. There was something about sex. He thought that women, damn, I don't remember. And this is one of my favorite movies and my brain just isn't working today. It was about sex, that if she had sex with him, that she would fall in love with him or something, or when it... Oh, men and women can't be friends because they always wanna have sex. I knew it had to do with sex. I knew that. Give me that point, okay? It had to do with sex, I knew that. Cats. Cats. I want what she's having. It was the New York City Library. They ended up going to City Hall, but um, it was originally supposed to be the New York City Library, the place where all love stories are held. I don't know, where's Cologero? Forget Sunny. Cologero! Um, I have no idea. I can't remember. I watched these movies a million years ago. What's the door test? Manhattan Magnet School, Magnet, Magnet Art School or something? Yeah. It's the Manhattan Magnet, right? Yeah. I have no clue. 
But let me tell you, when I shot that movie, I was like, whose apartment is this big? And what kind of guap we got? Because that was not the way my apartment was growing up. It was like a loft. It's one of your favorite Soho? Yes. Who knew? Chanel was popping in Soho. Yeah. I killed that. I got 10 out of 12 people. That was not that bad. Well, you guys, I hope you enjoyed going down New York memory lane with me, just discussing all the dreams I had for my life and kind of where we are today. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you again to New York & Company for sponsoring this video. Mwah.